What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the Dose Media Network. If you're new here, my name is Joey, and in this video, I will be going over the players that you should be considering in cash games for week three on NFL DraftKings. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We're on our way to 500 subscribers. It helps us out a ton. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you want to see these videos each and every single week. And remember, if you are watching this on Saturday, we will be live streaming at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight, going over our final thoughts for the week three main slate. We're live for about an hour to an hour and a half. We chat with everybody that comes in. You can ask us questions. You can ask us start sits, et cetera, et cetera. It's all around a good time. So make sure you tune into that tonight. Without further ado, let's take a look at the week three main slate and talk about my favorite cash game plays for week three. All right, so we have a relatively tight week this week. In my opinion, there are a lot of high-priced, high-upside quarterbacks on this slate, and that goes for every other position as well. And there's certain games that we are just going to target over others. And the first game is this Buffalo in Miami game. It looks like the standout game on the slate, in my opinion. It has one of the highest totals. Of any game, the Bills have a ton of injuries on their defense right now, so that bodes well for the Miami pass catchers. And then obviously the Bills are probably the best team in the NFL right now. So we should see tons of fantasy fireworks in this spot. And Josh Allen at 8,200, I think, is the standout quarterback on this slate. Just the ultimate combo of floor slash ceiling that you that you're getting out of Josh Allen, as you can see here, 32 plus DraftKings points in back to back weeks. Obviously, going on the road in Miami. Miami is, you know, kind of a tough place to play. They have a little bit of a rivalry. Uh, so this is going to be a highly anticipated matchup between these two teams. But nonetheless, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Dawson Knox, an elite offensive scheme. His rushing upside is obviously very, very high, um, and his touchdown upside is extremely high, and it's really that simple for me. Uh, all of the Bills' touchdowns are most likely going to come through Josh Allen, and that is just super valuable in fantasy football, period. Uh, you know, there's hardly going to be ever any games where it's all Devin Singletary or, or it's all Singletary slash Zach Moss or James Cook or just any running back in general. A lot or 90% of the touchdowns are going to come through Josh Allen, whether that be through the air or on the ground. So at 8,200, he's still projecting as one of the best values on the slate. I love Josh Allen for cash games. And my second favorite cash game quarterback is Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has just been very stellar to start the year so far. You know, he's a top five PFF ranked quarterback as it currently stands his ceiling is extremely high as we can see here against the vikings on that monday night game 37 points in a game script where they were ahead the entire match and you know only 24 points in a, in a game where they were ahead the entire match but this right here man this right here 28 rushing attempts 140 plus rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns already to start the season. You know, he's on pace to go well over a thousand yards rushing and he's been efficient through the air as well. So Jalen Hurts at 7,600 is just the ultimate floor slash ceiling player. You're getting a $600 discount off of Josh Allen and $600 on this slate could potentially go a long way. So my initial lean is to play Jalen Hurts over Josh Allen in cash, but that's not something I will have set in stone until, you know, one o'clock rolls around tomorrow afternoon. So definitely tune into the late night live stream that I referenced earlier in the video. But nonetheless, I think if you're playing cash games, you're playing one of these two quarterbacks point blank period. Uh, they're just projecting the best. They're both great values on this slate. Both of the games are relatively good just from a Vegas perspective and from a total perspective and the bills and the Eagles both have some of the highest implied team totals on the slate. So Josh Allen, Jalen hurts are really the only quarterbacks I would consider and their floor and ceiling combos are just significantly higher than, you know, these cheap quarterbacks like Derek Carr, Jared Goff, Marcus Mariota, etc. So I wouldn't feel too comfortable paying down at quarterback 
this week, and I am only considering these two guys at the quarterback position. All right, moving on to running back. Running back is a relatively ugly position this week, especially when you take into account the context of the entire slate in general. I reference that it is a pretty tight slate. There are a lot of high priced players that we are going to want to play. So we are going to have to save salary somewhere. And I just don't think it's feasible this week to play Christian McCaffrey at 8,800 or play Jonathan Taylor at 9K or even Austin Eckler, Delvin Cook, or Joe, Joe Mixon at 7,600. I don't think it's possible to play these guys. And when you compare these running backs to their wide receiver counterparts at the same price range, the wide receivers are just going to project so much better and their ceilings are so much higher, especially with a lot of these situations just being committee backfields now in the NFL. And, you know, a lot of these running backs are on relatively poor teams, you know, specifically Christian McCaffrey, Derek Henry, uh, the Titans just are not good in my opinion. Um, and so I'm just fading these top guys. They're great tournament plays. And I have a ton of interest in flipping the builds in tournaments. Uh, but for this week, we are going to look down at the running back position. And I think the guy that stands out the most to me as it stands right now is Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette is top four in the NFL in terms of running back touches to start the year. The Bucks are dealing with a ton of injuries to their wide receiver core. Chris Godwin is out. Julio is banged up. Russell Gage was on the injury report, but should play. Mike Evans obviously suspended for being a total idiot. So Leonard Fournette is just in line to see a ton of opportunity against a Packers run defense that can be exposed. And obviously we know he has a ton of upside in the passing game. It hasn't been there to start the season, which is unfortunate. But we know it's in his range to get six, seven targets. And at 6,500, Leonard Fournette is just projecting as the best running back value on the slate. So I think you are locking Leonard Fournette into your cash game lineups. You know, as gross as that might be, just price included, context of the slate included. I think he is the best running back play for cash games this week. I think a lot of people are also going to gravitate towards these cheapish running backs like David Montgomery at 5,900. David Montgomery is top seven in the NFL in terms of running back touches, six targets through two weeks. He has a 20 plus percent target share on the Bears right now, you know, albeit they don't pass the ball at all, which is just so bad in my opinion, but it's a good spot at home against a very average. Texans defense so David Montgomery at 5900 is projecting relatively okay right now and I think a lot of people are going to feel comfortable playing Leonard Fournette and David Montgomery in cash games together and just from an overall cash game construction strategy I think that this week is definitely going to be a two running back week so I think most of the people playing cash games, head-to-heads, double-ups, et cetera, are going to be playing Leonard Fournette and David Montgomery and moving on from there. But just talking about some other running backs that I would consider at least is Miles Sanders at 5,500. This is a great spot for the Eagles rushing attack as you know six-point favorites against this Washington team that has gotten obliterated on defense in back-to-back -back weeks. They obviously gave up a ton of big plays to the Lions last week, and DeAndre Swift looked relatively sharp against them. And Miles Sanders kind of has this role where, you know, he's going to get 15 to 20 touches per game, and he's only 5,500. He's projecting okay right now. I think he's definitely a tier below David Montgomery, but I would consider him to say the least. Uh, Josh Jacobs, you can consider at 5,400. It's going to be interesting to see if he plays. I'm recording this on Saturday and I don't have the information right now whether or not he is going to be available for this game. He didn't fly out with the team, but he could still fly to Tennessee today or tonight and play in this game tomorrow. He is sick. Um, so that's definitely an injury situation to watch because that would potentially open up Samir White at the min price. And I think a lot of people might gravitate towards Damian Pierce at 5K. Uh, Damian Pierce kind of has a very similar role to Miles Sanders, and you're getting a $500 discount, you know, albeit seven points less than the implied team total. And just overall a terrible game, in my opinion. 
but you're still going to get 15 to 20 touches out of Damian Pierce. Uh, this is a easily winnable game for the Houston Texans. So if we get Pierce in a favorable game script against the Bears, even in Soldier Field, I think that this is a player that's going to project well from a volume perspective, but his floor is relatively low, and I think his ceiling is also relatively low so i really wouldn't play damian pierce but if you really need the 900 or the 500 coming off of sanders or david montgomery i think it's okay but nonetheless the running back pool this week is just very slim in terms of cash games and you're going to have to make a player too that you feel kind of uncomfortable with and that for me would would be david montgomery but we know he's going to get touches so you kind of just have to hope that he's somewhat efficient in this plus spot uh, with the opportunity that he's going to get. But then again, it is the Bears, and you know this could easily fall flat right, right in front of your face. But those are going to be the highest-owned cash game running backs. Um, if you want, I guess you could play Joe Mixon at 7,600 and sacrifice one of the wide receivers on this slate. Uh, but ne- I wouldn't necessarily do that personally. But yeah, those are the chalkiest running backs for week Three, moving on to wide receiver. Wide receiver is a gold mine this week with Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, even Cooper Cup, I think, all in play for cash this week. And I think the standout play is definitely Stephon Diggs at 7,700. I mean, he's just been feasting to start the season. This is kind of what we had hoped he would do Last year, you know, he was consistent, but he didn't really have many spike weeks last season. And, you know, this year he's off to a phenomenal start, as you could see on the screen. And with Gabe Davis potentially back, I think that definitely cuts into Stefan Diggs ceiling quite a bit. Um, I shouldn't say quite a bit. It, It definitely cuts into a ceiling, but Diggs ceiling is still abnormally but Dick's ceiling is still one of the highest on the entire slate. I think he's just relatively underpriced for his role in this Bills offense. He's a target earner. He's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL attached to one of, if not the best quarterback in the NFL right now in one of the best games on the slate. So 7,700 for Stephon Diggs looks really, really, really sharp right now. And he's projecting as the best value on the entire slate out of any position. So I think you're locking digs in to your cash game lineup and where I think the conversation starts is whether or not you want to play Amon Ross St. Brown or Tyreek Hill. Amon Ross St. Brown, as you can see, is $400 cheaper than Tyreek Hill. And Amon Ross St. Brown is top three in the league in target share through the first two weeks. As you can see here, 24 targets and back-to-back games. This is a game where it could be a potential shootout against a Vikings defense that has gotten exposed these first two weeks. And this is a this is a team that everybody's high on. Everybody loves the Lions and everybody in the fantasy industry loves Amon Ross St. Brown. So at 7,200, he's going to be one of the chalkiest wide receivers and I think that he just earns targets. You know, he just earns targets. He scores touch. He scores touchdowns. Uh, Jared Goff looks to Amon Ross St. Brown a ton of the time. And even if Swift and Hawkinson and all these other guys are out on the field, Amon Ross St. Brown is the clear number one option in this line's passing attack. And, you know, I'm valuing him as such. And at 7,200, I think this is a player that we could see get above 8K. Uh, as the season goes on. So I kind of still want to be in on Amon Ross St. Brown at 7,200. So I definitely, definitely love him. Tyreek Hill has notoriously torched the Buffalo Bills every time that they've played. You know, most recent was that championship game with Patrick Mahomes. And we see here that like Tyreek Hill losing Patrick Mahomes doesn't take away from his ceiling at all. He's still a burner. He can still get behind defenses and score long touchdowns even with Tua as his quarterback and I referenced the Bills injuries earlier in the video you know they just put Micah Hyde on IR Jordan Poyer is also out for this game they're also missing Tredavious White who is still on IR so they are dealing with a ton of injuries in their secondary similar to what the Ravens were dealing with last week so I think this is another explosion spot for the Dolphins passing attack at home 
I think that the Bills defensive line could definitely give the, the Dolphins offensive line troubles for sure. But I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, it, it looks like Mike McDaniels is, you know, playing this team correctly and just feeding Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. So at seventy six hundred, Tyreek Hill is a standout play in my opinion. And if I had to rank these top wide receivers, it would definitely be Diggs, Amonra, Tyreek Hill as my one, two, and three. And then I think Justin Jefferson would be my fourth favorite. But at ninety three hundred on this slate, I think it is kind of hard to get there. Not talking about some other wide receivers that I like. Uh, we're definitely going to have to pay down to one or two of these cheap-ish wide receivers. I think Brandon Cooks is in play at 5,800. As you can see here, just an insane target share. You know, although the offense is pretty trash and the touchdown upside is just never going to be there with Cooks, you know you are getting targets and volume and his projection is relatively good each and every single week. So so you know from a process standpoint, he's a solid play each and every single week. Uh, T. Higgins at 6,100 I think is okay. Um, we know that he's going to get targeted at a similar rate as Jamar Chase. All of the you know stats surrounding Chase and Higgins are pretty much the same throughout their career so far. So in terms of targets, T. Higgins should be up there with Chase, and he's only 6,100. Uh, but I think we're going to have to look down to this 5K range and below for some value wide receivers. I think the guy that stands out to me the most, and it's not just because I'm a Patriots fan, is Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers, as you can see on the screen, has 19 targets through the first two weeks. You know, he has a 28 plus percent target share, and Mac Jones just looks to Jacoby. And this is a game where the Patriots are three point dogs. At home in the home opener, I think Jacoby going up against this banged up Ravens secondary as max safety blanket for only 5K. I think I think he's one of the best pay down options at wide receiver. You know, he's not going to get you 25 or 30 DraftKings points, but if he gets you 15 at 5K, you will take that all day, every day. And he's going to be out there a ton. You know, he plays pretty much every single snap and he gets targeted like crazy, uh, quite frankly. So at 5K, I definitely love Jacoby Myers. He's probably my favorite option in this range. And just some other guys I want to mention, Curtis Samuel at 5,100 is definitely in play. 20 targets through the first two weeks, as you can see on the screen. Great game environment. He's projecting pretty good as well right now. So I definitely don't mind Curtis Samuel. It's going to be interesting to see if I play both of these guys or only one, or if I go a little bit cheaper, because you know you have your Russell Gage at 4,700. You have your Zay Jones at 4K. I think uh, I think some people might play Zay Jones, although the target upside, in my opinion, isn't that high uh, at 4K. He's a great, cheap option this week. I think Brashad Perryman might have some ownership at 3,900, just with all the Bucks players out that I mentioned before. Uh, but yeah, this is a week where we're going to have to wait and see for injury news and see what opens up because there are some players injured and out um, for week three. And, you know, I guess I could mention Matt Collins uh, if I if I type him in Matt Collins because Hunter Renfro is out this week. So Matt Collins sh should see, you know, an expanded role. He had eight targets last week, you know, although. Matt Collins isn't going to take over the slot role. I think Matt Collins is second on the depth chart if Renfro is out. So he would be playing the, the outside wide receiver spot, and he'd be playing in more two wide receiver sets. I think Keelan Cole takes over the Hunter Renfro role, and Keelan Cole is only 3K. So uh, I, I guess you can consider him as well. But Matt Collins could potentially get some ownership uh, this week. I'm not too sure. If he will, I probably won't play Matt Collins. I think Zay Jones um, is a better play straight up for, you know, 700 more. Um, I definitely prefer Zay Jones. I want to be in the range of Jacoby Myers, Curtis Samuel, Devonta Smith. I want to be in this range for, you know, my my cheap wide receivers. Um, and if I have to, I, I would play Zay Jones or Brashard Perryman. Moving on to the tight end position to wrap this video up. I think in cash games, there's really only one player you're considering this week, and that's 3,100. Irv Smith Jr., maybe this is an overreaction from week two, 
but we saw him have eight targets and the Eagles are notorious are notorious for struggling, you know, over the middle of the field. They don't really value their middle linebackers that much, even though they did draft Nicobe Dean. Uh, but Irv Smith, obviously, last week had a great game and just wasn't priced correctly because the game was on Monday night. So this is the cash game tight end, in my opinion. I guess you could play Jawan Johnson for 200 less, but he's just not going to project as well. And everybody is going to play Irv Smith, and, you know, he's a great pay down. I just don't think you can get to this, you know, Gerald Everett, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard, TJ Hawkinson range this week just due to the salary restrictions. So relatively easy tight end week four cash games. You're playing Irv Smith and you're moving on. And then, you know, at defense, you just play cheap defense like the Panthers or the Texans or the Patriots and and you move on. The Panthers are going to be the chalk. I would just lock in the Panthers at home against a hurt Jameis Winston or Andy Dalton if Dalton starts. That is going to be it. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. If you're still watching, shout out to you. Don't mind my messy background. I didn't make my bed yet. Um, but yeah, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. Comment down below whether or not you think these are the correct cash game plays for this week. And as always, I will see you guys tonight on the Saturday night live stream. And I will see you guys next week whenever this video comes out have a great day everybody